All right, what's up, everybody? Brian here, and this is my WWE Monday Night Raw review. Uh, the first of two videos I plan on uploading um, tonight or today. Uh, so I'm going to start off with Raw from this past Monday and give my thoughts on last Monday's episode. I just I watched it earlier because I didn't watch it Monday or yesterday, so I figured I'd watch it today. And of course, the big thing going into Raw Monday night was not only the fallout from TLC that happened Sunday, but the return of of what some some people might call Mr. Ratings Booster. That would be Mr. McMahon, the boss. He made his return Monday night, and basically there was a lot of speculation as to what the of of what he would have to say about Raw's recent dip in ratings. And he would come out, he would talk about how Raw has been on the air for 25 years. He would talk he would talk about how the most important part of the of WWE is the fans, the WWE universe. He would then proceed to bring out Stephanie, Triple H and Shane, all all who made their entrances separately. They then would um, start talking about how that they are disappointing in themselves for not listening to what the WWE Universe had to say or wanted, and that starting now, they were going to take control of Raw and SmackDown Live, and that the fans were the authority, that they would listen to what the fans wanted wanted to see and all this different stuff and I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm like for how long until we get the the usual oh we're doing what's best for business stuff that they usually do so so I'm like okay and then they announced that there would be new faces for new matchups the usual stuff that they always say whenever they, whenever the McMahon clan or the McMahon family joins in, you know, comes together, uh, trying to deflect, uh, saying that they're going to start listening to what the fans say and and not deflecting the reason that the raw that the ratings for Raw have been in the have been in the dumps recently is because of them. They figured, let's be nice, let's make them make ourselves look like you know we're we're gonna be good, and let's say we're gonna listen to what the WWE fans and the WWE universe have to say and what they want to see, and give them what they want. So, uh, pretty much, they were then interrupted by Baron Corbin, uh, who came out and whined and complained about losing at TLC because of several superstars got involved. Uh, and cost him his match against Bear, uh, against Braun Strowman. This, that, and the other. He said he wanted to be GM. Triple H said, you know what? Fine. If you want to be GM, you're going to have to earn it, and you'll get the op you'll get that if you win your match tonight, right now, against your opponent. And out came Kurt Angle. Heath Slater, they then announced that Heath Slater would be the special referee. He came out in the referee's shirt, of course, because Baron Corbin made him a WWE official after he won a match against Rhino. Rhino got fired by Baron Corbin a couple weeks ago, and then Corbin made Slater an official. So he came out in the referee outfit. They then made a change. Uh, halfway through the match, or maybe three quarters of the way through the match, saying that, oh, this is now a handicap match, uh, four on one, or yeah, four on one. It was going to be Baron Corbin against Kurt Angle and his tag team partners, Bobby Roode, Chad Gable, and Apollo Crews. They came out. Then they, then once again, the, McMahon, the McMahons, I think it was Shane that came out and said, now this is a no disqualification match. So basically they used chairs like they did at TLC. They beat Corbin up. 
Uh, crowds, the crowd was chanting, they want, we want tables. Angle got the pin with the angle slam. This, that, and the other. And then they would then uh, pick up Baron Corbin, and they would get a table. They would bring it in the ring. They would pick up Baron, and Kurt Angle would hit the Olympic slam or angle slam on Corbin, sending him through the table. That was pretty much it for that. Corbin then a little bit later on would get left laying by Seth Rollins uh, after an interview with that Rollins was conducting about Dean Ambrose and how he lost the Intercontinental title to Ambrose at TLC. This would lead to a match being set up for next week, uh, Christmas, Eve's, uh, Christmas Eve's edition of Raw next week. Rollins versus Corbin, so that will be interesting to see what happens there. Um, let's see what else. I have my notes written here. Uh, we had Finn Balor taking on Dolph Ziggler. Sorry, guys. It becomes dark. Um, Finn Balor took on Dolph Ziggler. This came about because of what happened at TLC after Finn Balor defeated Drew McIntyre. With the help of Ziggler, Ziggler would then attack Balor backstage during an interview after that match. Um... Balor and Ziggler, they did a really good match. Uh, McIntyre came out near the end. He got involved. He won. It wound up being the match wound up being thrown out because McIntyre interfered and got involved and beat up both Mac, uh, Ziggler and Balor. This would then lead to the announcement that next week a triple threat match would be made between McIntyre, Ziggler, and Balor. So that'll be interesting to see what happens in that one. Um. We heard from Dean Ambrose, the new Intercontinental Champion, uh, who came out basically challenging Rollins to come out uh, to fight him, all this stuff. He then would take a page out of Rollins' playbook, and he wanted to, he was going to issue an open challenge to anyone except Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Tyler Breeze would answer the challenge. He gave it a good effort. I was really impressed with Tyler Breeze in this one. He really, he almost won the Intercontinental title, but Dean Ambrose um, defeated Tyler Breeze with Dirty Deeds to retain the title. So afterwards, Rollins' music would play. The riot, uh, uh, the SWAT team that uh, walks around with Ambrose. He, they were, they rushed to, uh, I think two or three of them went to the aisleway thinking that Rollins was going to come through the, come from the entranceway, but Rollins dressed up like one of the SWAT team members would get in the ring from behind and attack Ambrose. He would then uh, fight off the SWAT team members that tried to stop him. Ambrose um, made his escape. And Rollins would take out the other three members of the of the SWAT team, and then stare at Dean Ambrose as Ambrose cowardly ran away toward the back. So obviously this feud is not going any going to end anytime soon. So um, we had a four way match to determine the number one contender to the Raw Tag Team Titles. It was the AOP, the Revival, Lucha House Party, and the B-Team. Uh, this came about because uh, Shane, uh, after an interview, was inter or during an interview, was interrupted by Drake Maverick and the AOP, who wanted to know, who wanted their audit mandatory rematch against Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, who defeated them last week. Shane said... You know what? We're doing away with uh, antiqu what is it? Antiquated rematches. No more. You're gonna have to earn your opportunities. So he booked that four-way match. Uh, the revival would come out on top in that one, and they are now the number one contenders for the Raw Tag Team Titles, and they will receive a future shot, which I think is a great move by WWE to have them win. Hopefully they do something with the Revival because 
when when the revival were in NXT, they were a great tag team. And now since they come when when they came to the main roster, I'm thinking, oh, they're they're gonna do big things with them. And because of injuries, they haven't really uh, had anything, you know, had any chances. So this is gonna be a huge opportunity for the revival against for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Um. We had an, a segment with Elias and Bobby Lashley. Lashley came out uh, with, it, or Lashley was in the ring mocking Elias, how he, how Elias usually does his in-ring entrance. Uh, pretty much, they, uh, Lashley and um, Leo Rush talked about what they did to uh, Elias at TLC, hitting him with the guitar in the back. To make a long story short, this segment ended with Elias getting revenge and hitting Lashley in the back when Lashley was posing with the with a, with a, another guitar. Uh, they then would announce that next week in a miracle on 34th Street fight, Elias would face would face Lashley next week. So uh, that's another match set for next week's Christmas Eve edition. Uh, we then heard from Ronda Rousey, the Raw Women's Champion. She talked about what she uh, did at TLC, making Nia Jax tap out, how she got involved in the SmackDown Women's title triple threat TLC match involving Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Asuka, costing Charlotte and Becky that matchup. She then would go on to say about she wanted to define what a champion, a real champion is, facing anybody, taking on all comers, all this stuff. So she basically issued a challenge to any woman, any um, anyone on the Raw Women's Division or Raw Women's roster to come out and face her. They then would show uh, the uh, the like the backstage and uh, backstage area where all the Raw women were wait were like play our music, they were telling the producers, play our music, Stephanie would come on, with St Stephanie would come up and say, you guys come with me, they then would come out, and Stephanie would announce that Ronda Rousey would face and would defend her title next week against the winner of the eight-woman gauntlet, and involving the women of Raw, sorry guys if I'm rambling, um, so basically, it started with Alicia Fox and Bailey. Bailey would win against Alicia. She would win against Dana Dana uh, Dana Brooke. She would then be eliminated by Mickey James, who would then be eliminated. Um, I'm trying to think who uh, she would then. Uh, Mickey James would be eliminated by Ember Moon. Ember Moon would be eliminated by Natalia. She, Natalia would then eliminate Ruby Riot, and then it would come down to Sasha and uh, Natalia as the final two, and Natalia would uh, win the, the gauntlet with the sharpshooter, making Sasha Banks tap out. So Natalia will get her opportunity next week to face her, her best friend, her friend and uh, Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, so that is a huge title match set for next week. So, with that in mind, with that uh, being said, all in all, I thought Raw was was average, was okay. Um, the changes they announced that you know the McMahon's announced that they were going to take control of Raw should be interesting to see what happens. You know, how's that going to work? Are they going to be on TV every week? We'll have to wait and see. So, with that in mind, uh, what did you guys think of Raw? Let me know in the comments below. I thought it was I thought it was an okay show this week. So, with that in mind, this has been my Raw review or my Raw recap on what took place on uh, last Monday's episode of Raw. As always, I am Brian, and thank you for watching.